Hello boys and girls, mums and dads. Welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. Today I'm having a look around my factory to try and work out what it was I was doing in the last episode. As far as I remember, I built up a bit more stuff down here on the end of the bus. Uh, I've got these uh, level 2 miners being built, so next time I go out and build up a mine I can get it running a lot faster than I can at the moment. Uh, I've got grey science working, as you can see here. Has that? Yep, that's fully backed up now. Um, oh yeah, and the yellow belts, which in um, Angel Bob's is the Mark II belts. That's a few things done, but as we can, as you can see here, the um, this is tin, the green stuff, isn't it? Yes, tin. The tin isn't coming through anything like fast enough to keep all of my um, construction happy. So I think the first job for today's episode is to go and inc increase the speed of tin production. It looks like lead is also struggling a bit. Where's that being used? A bit further up, I think. Yes, that's being used around here for the um, for the basic electronic circuits. So that needs speeding up as well. And by the look of it, I also need to speed up the um, the basic circuit production as well. So, so I think today is going to be an episode of expansion. Start, so let's go up and, and start off with the tin, since I started talking about that first. Okay, what's the uh, limiting factor here? The limiting factor is quite clearly the amount of the stuff I'm digging out of the ground. Now these are, yes, these are still the Mark 1 mining drills. And I've got some mi Mark 2 mining drills now. So just by replacing these, I should be able to double the production. And then, of course, I'll put some more in because, well, why wouldn't I? The more the merrier and the faster I'll get the, uh, the resources out. There we go. That's producing it much more quickly now. In fact, it's producing it sufficiently fast, uh, sufficiently quickly, that I'm, um, I'm producing more than these crushers can keep up with. So let's have a look, look at making some better crushers, shall we? Which I can't do because I don't have any stone bricks. So I'm interested in Mark II crushers. So let's find out what I need to build those. I'll probably be in my search. So advanced ore refining here gets me the ore crusher mark two and the sorting facility mark two as well. Those take those take clay bricks as well as steel, so that's going to be tricky. But yeah, let's have let's let's research that anyway. Find out what it um, find out how hard it is to get clay bricks, and then we can uh, we can see about that in in the next um, as the next thing. Stone bricks that that um, warehouse is working very nicely to keep to um, keep pulling the the bricks in and give me a nice large supply of them whenever I need it. So let's make another three crushers I think so I can put one in here and then maybe another two on the top although it's gonna have to wind down here it's gonna be a bit of a mess but I'm sure I can wind it down through, through here if I, need, if I need to so the first one can go in this nice convenient gap here these output grabbers seem to be working rather hard I don't think they're quite keeping up so let's increase the number of those I've got <laughs> now the input grabbers are uh, running flat out. There we go. Of course, now I've run into the problem where my um, sorter isn't, isn't fast enough to keep up with everything that's going on. Okay, let's have a look at the Mark II sorters. This is clay bricks again, so... Alright, let's find out how to make clay bricks. Clay bricks come from unburnt clay bricks, comes from clay, sand and lime. This is looking complicated already. Clay comes from mud, water and water. Oh, I think I've seen this mud stuff before. You have to build up an, uh, a, a long chain of um, of washing plants that will take really heavy mud, mud, really muddy water in at the beginning, and then produce lots and lots of different types of muddy water as it passes through. And that seems to be where the sand, oh, sand and limestone come come from that as, come from that as well. So that needs a couple of levels of washing. So let's have a look into that. Okay, I think these are all things things are all worth doing. So we'll. Um, We'll work on that, and um, for now we'll just have to accept that things are running as quickly as they can with the level of technology in these all sorts we've got. Unless I move that right down over here, that might be worth doing for now, actually. Let's do that. Have another raw sorter. And some more beer. This is water treatment, and then washing one and washing two. Who'd have thought that washing could be so complicated? In the meantime, though, that should have increased the, um, the rate of... Uh, getting through the uh, of, of tin production at least a little bit because I'm now absolutely maxing out this ore sorter. Has it made any difference further down the chain? No, I'm still using it up as fast as it comes in. Great. <laughs> Am I going to have the same problems with lead? No, lead is quite clearly a mining problem up here. There's um, a lot of miners working on the coal, but very few on the on the rubyite around the edge of it. Speaking of rubyite, I discovered um, in between episodes there was a bug in um, one of the versions of the uh, the mods I was using that could cause the uh, the rub rubyite to not actually spawn in the wild. So fortunately, I discovered this before I actually did too much exploring. Um, so I've turned that feature on now. So as I go out into the wild and and dangerous outlands, I hopefully will come across some more rubyite and prob I, th I believe big patches of it. And so I won't won't run out of lead in sort of two episodes time as I was. <laughs> 
bit worried am I? Okay, so we've got two of these now. Let's put... I'll stick with the ore going in on one side and coming out on the other, I think. So we'll put that there, grab that one, and put a second one there. Right, so that'll carry the, um, the results of this um, sorting background there. Uh, so I need a load of inserters. How many? Was, I think I was using three for each of these. And I need to get power to them somehow. There we go. And you're both to sort Bobmonium. Okay, three, in, three, three inserters on each might have been overkill, but never mind. Better than, having, not, better than not having enough. I can put modules in them, but I don't have enough energy, but that's worth knowing for the future. Is there anything else here I need? I don't really know. Um, oh, let's... Let's research cars. I haven't got, I'm nowhere near actually being able to build cars yet, but um, it's nice to have them if, um, at some point anyway. Okay, how's my uh, tin production doing? Coming through, it's it's okay. I mean, it's going to be a bit faster than it was before, but not as much faster as I'd like it to be. Um, I could probably put in another two ore sorting facilities, actually. That's quite brick intensive, I think. Oh, and I'm short of iron as well. That I can fix. Two more of them. Yeah, because it's using about half of the furnaces I've got set up here now. And of course, I can put more furnaces in if I want to, but <coughs> at the moment, this seems to be about right, given what I've got. And uh, once I've built this up a bit more, they should should be about at sort of fairly high levels of um, throughput. So, okay, so there's lots of space and more silicon. I'm not producing that anything like as quickly as I need to worry about. The sort of just some of these trees. I think it's time to start using big boy power poles now. I've got the steel, I've got, well, iron obviously I've got, um, and these little ones are starting to get frustrating because they just don't have the range. And now I don't need to worry about going around the other side, so I need, but I need another one. Right, now we have four sorters sorting the bobmonium. It's, is it still coming out faster than I'm using it? We'll find out in a minute. Ah, and that um, final sorter is having trouble keeping up. It isn't able to get some of its stuff out so let's start using both sides of the belt now as we should. Um, that means this is going to need to come in here now if we're going to have problems. <laughs> and I'm going to need another crusher to deal with all these slag. So let's at least use up the little poles I'm carrying. <laughs> that's almost a full half belt of, um, of tin coming, tin ore coming in here now. That's quite impressive. That, that's coming in at a nice, nice old rate. Okay, good. Right, I think that's my tin problems well. I, I don't know if they're actually sorted now, but they're certainly massively alleviated. I've roughly, I suspect, quadrupled, yes, I must have at least quadrupled the, uh, the throughput there, so that's definitely a good thing. Now, coming up here, this one's going to be a little bit different, because, as I said, I don't think the, um, well, I don't have a sorting problem at all, because it's just getting crushed and then passed down here. The, prop the bit that's going to be fiddly up here is um, getting around, is getting the belts and the miners around all of this stuff because I built this as a coal mine originally when I didn't know whether I was going to want all of the um, the rubite. So let's see, do I have any yellow? Yes I do have some yellow underground belts. Can that go across there? No. <laughs> right, so this is going to be interesting. What's the furthest I can get with this? To there. Okay. So I'm going to remove this ammo belt and this turret supply belt rather because it's cutting right through the middle of the ore patch because I didn't know any better at the time and I was struggling to deal with the um, uh, struggling to deal with the cliff faces because I didn't have the long the uh, long underground belts but now if I do that that should pull it out far enough away that I can come around here and slap in the decent mining drills which I only have three of left but I should have brought some more of those up with me I could put one in here yeah let's do that because there's quite a lot of rubite around here that otherwise I'm just not going to get snake this one out. <laughs> I can't get myself out there. Okay, let's get some more fast um, pasta mining drills, because I am gradually trying to replace the um, standard electric mining drills with the faster ones as I go around. So down here somewhere. Yes, I should be able to put these into here and get some more out of there. Uh, yeah, let's have faster axe. That that's always useful. And how's my stone brick production coming on? Let, let's um, tile over some more of the, the base while we're at it. Pretty well, I'd say, given that I can't pick it all up in one go. But can I put it all down in one go? All the way up here. Stay on the inside of this wall for no apparent reason. Um, yeah. This is amazing. I've never done this with long reach before. Right. 
that's the uh, stone brick problem dealt with for now. And uh, now I'm up here, I'm going to put down a lot of these faster miners. And the nice thing about this, because there's a lot of rubite out on the, the extremes of the field, that's going to be, st I'm going to be producing that first for quite a lot, in quite a lot of this area. Meaning there's going to be a lot more rubite than coal coming through potentially. So actually at this point I hope there's enough coal coming through to keep every, all my, um, the rest of my factory satisfied. I think we'll just see how it goes for now. At the moment, coal, yeah, the majority of stuff coming out is still coal. The rubite is being pulled straight out down here, so I, I don't see this being a problem. But we shall see as it um, as it progresses. There we go, and I'm out of underground of um, little wooden poles as well. Let's put, let's put these on the uh, on there instead. I should automate production of those as well, to be honest. Okay, so now down here, I haven't quite overwhelmed the um but i suspect much more comes through i will so let's put in a little bit more crushing power i don't expect these ones down here to get used a great deal but still better to have too much than too little i think maybe i'll swap the sides of that as well excellent uh not excellent <laughs> oh right um yes this should go in here, like that. This shows the dangers of um, taking for granted which side of your belt stuff's going to be on, and is why you should always make sure you, if you're going to put two things on the same belt, make sure you get the sides right. I will, of course, not remember that next time I'm, I come along to do this sort of thing. Still, right, that's drastically increased the uh, lead production. This is unfortunately rather limited by the coal consumption. So there's a massive chain of uh, rubite up here. It's just not getting through. I mean, I could speed things along a bit. Oh, I suppose it is making it through reasonably effectively. Let's not worry about that too much. Okay, so the, f of the things I needed to do, that's, there was um, increasing tin production, which I've done to an extent. Increasing lead production, which I've done to also to, to an extent. Possibly a slightly better extent with the lead. Um... And then I wanted to, oh yes, I wanted to increase basic circuit production as well, didn't I? So that means coming along here, and essentially just making a copy of this. Um, it's a bit of a shame that I've set it up like this without the ability to just feed the belts straight past. But I think with the new yellow underground belts, I can, I can um, snatch uh, victory out of the jaws of defeat, as it were, like that. So that can come through there. And I can copy-paste this to there, um, probably to, to there I guess. Now, this is why I want bots, because if I had bots then it would be um, a bit easier to copy paste this stuff, they'd now do all the construction for me, but uh, at least it tells me where to put everything. I'm going to put these poles here, honestly. Uh, I should make some big ones. I've run out of inserters. Where where is my inserter construction? I know I'm doing it so, oh, somewhere. It must be, oh, it must be down here. There we go. Inserters, 100 of them. That'll, that'll help. Huh. There we go. Yeah, much easier with the big ones. Okay, you, you should get there, and you should go there. And that should be merged like so. Okay, now we're clearly being consumed more from the lower belt than the upper one, but eh, never mind. I suppose I could put in... Okay, let's balance it. I might as well. Actually, I don't even need. Let's do it off this one. That'd be neat. Okay, so that's double throughput of that as well. It's nice and easy to double things when you're producing pretty much the bare minimum. What am I now short of? So steel appears to be a um, bit of a problem now. But that said, it's coming to here. Are we using it anywhere before that? And I think that's the first place it's being used, so. Did that go just go down or up? <laughs> It was behind either these underground belts or these underground belts. Let's move one way or the other. I'd, I think that is slowly building up, but not as fast as I'd like. So let's go and have a look at the steel. But let's do it like this. Is that something I can practically increase as well? So the steel is clearly limited by the iron production at the moment, because that oxygen tank is completely full. And yeah, this belt isn't bringing it through fast enough. That's limited by the amount that's coming in, because that is being used up as fast as it's coming in. What's this limited by? This is limited by the amount of 
sorting facility available. Okay, so it looks like in order to speed this up, I need more ore sorting. Um, so that's running into the same sort of problems I was having over here with the tin. So I think I should start looking into those clay bricks now and see if I can start learning how to wash things. So no, is this a big enough area? Maybe. Maybe I'll push this wall across here to this cliff face and fill in the gaps down here, of course. There's another, there's a couple of biter nests around here though, so it's going to be going to be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Someday I should finish this wall off as well. Oh no, I wasn't going to bother, was I? Because the, um, the main bus is about to pump straight through there. Yeah, let's put in the washing over here. So I'll whack a, a wall across here to hit these. And then um, and build up the defences along it as well, of course. And then I can put the, the washing station in over here and hopefully sort of put, get something sensible going on there. Okay, so what do I need for that? I need a load of walls. Um, I left a load of them in a box somewhere, didn't I? Is it this box? No. No, it's not that box. I had some other boxes of junk that I didn't want to carry around with me, but I've forgotten where I left them. I suppose I... Oh, there they are over there. So yes, I need lots of walls. That's probably a good number of walls. What do I not need out of this stuff I'm carrying around with me? I definitely don't need those. That should probably be in a crusher. So let's take it up here and put it in there. Probably should have held on to that, actually. I'm probably going to want it later. Those are coming actually quite useful. Okay, let's build up some turrets, because I'm clearly going to need turrets if I'm expanding my um, my walls out. So, two turrets, and then I'm short of iron, which I can get from here. So I tried the um, the sniper turrets in an earlier episode, and to be honest, they didn't feel all that good. They seem, they seem to be quite powerful and capable of one-shotting quite a lot of biters, but they just don't seem to um, have quite the uh, the DPS, if you will. Yeah, they don't seem to have quite the sustained damage output, meaning that I don't think they'd be very good for this sort of defensive situation. However, if I can get them, if I can use them for turret creep towards a, uh, a biter nest, I can see them being quite a lot more useful for that, because at that point, being able to snipe and do significantly more damage in one go could be very useful. So where did I want to build across to? Basically just across the top of this bobmonium patch. Here, frustratingly. <laughs> so it's a slightly longer wall than would otherwise be required. But I think that does mean it's going to be slightly easier to defend though, because I'll be able to build turrets all the way all the way along behind it. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> At least one of them was a small one. That looks impassable. And that's now impassable. At least without chewing through them. Which is probably gonna happen anyway. Okay, so that area is now happily defended, at least until uh, the biters realise I've walled it off and come along to start chewing on it. So at this point I can now start bringing the um, ammunition belt up around here. So let's pick up these because hopefully I'll never need those again in this position. And I'm just going to split this because you never know, I might, I'm probably going to need more walls down there at the bottom. Uh, turrets, let's see, they go, what, one square back from the wall? And then I the line of ghosts like this. So the idea of this is if, if I put the ghosts down first, then once I've built up the um, actual defences, if I if I make sure they're all on these on ghosts, then it means that there's a there's room to put in the exact uh, and into the exact right number to get a chain of, of turrets going all the way across there and getting basically the maximum amount of defensive firepower as I possibly can. That's close enough. And I'm out of belts. It's not good timing for that. Although I am now building belts down here. Thank goodness for that. It'd be a long walk otherwise. Oh dear, they're attacking already. <laughs> uh, I was hoping I'd have a little bit more respite than that. Probably should have put the belt in before I put the, put the turrets in, really. That should have just been a wall. Let's get this fixed back up again. <laughs> um, and now if I start putting these in along here, eventually, when the ammunition finally reaches the um, this part of the defensive line, I'll just start filling themselves up. I think I'm going to want more than just one turret at the end of that, though. I can't put one there because the, um, the cliff's in the way. But two, maybe two of them in close proximity like this will be enough. We'll find out. I should probably arm these gaps as well because they're bound to get attacked at some point. 
Okay. Territory successfully expanded. And my Steel Axe 2 is finished. How fast is this now? Not bad. Doesn't seem that much faster, but... Uh, oh, let's get Steel Axe 3. <laughs> That's nice. <clears throat> nice cheap one as well. Okay, now... Um, the reason I was doing this was so that I could start thinking about up mud and stuff from the bottom of the ocean and doing all the various happy sorty things with that. A couple of pieces of landfill and fill in that gap. Not that much, that much. Right. Let's see. So I wanted clay. Now clay comes from burnt clay bricks, comes from clay, which comes from concentrated mud water, which comes from heavy mud water, which comes from viscous mud water, which comes from viscous mud water made in a seafloor pump. Which requires steel. <laughs> I knew I was going to re regret getting rid of that steel I was carrying. Fortunately, there's a supply of it just down here. Oh yeah, it's definitely picking up. It is. It is producing. I am producing steel faster than I'm using it. Now that's at least partly bec because I'm not using armor-piercing ammunition because I haven't because I'm not using using the grey research uh, juice at the moment, and because I'm not using it in my own guns, which would have allowed me to get through those biters a bit quicker. But still, it's um, good to know that I'm. That it's not getting used up too quickly. Right, so seafloor pump, seafloor pump, this is my da, 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 da. washing plants, washing plant mark two. I suspect I'm not going to be able to manage the uh, mark twos. Stone bricks, okay. Other than that, that's all fairly straightforward. I'm going to run it. Oh no, I've got plenty, should be okay with steel for a while. I'm going to need to pick up more pipes, so let's get some more pipes and some more bricks and then build several of those. So pipes come from there. I love how quickly that fills back up again. That's absolutely fantastic. Washing. I can't remember how many levels of washing there are. Let's just build a full set of these things. Full eight. Right. So, where is it? There they are. Now, I am cheating a little bit here, I'll admit. My previous Angel Bob's run, I did discover the joys of washing mud for a living. So I have a vague idea of how to make how all this works together. Um, so I'm aware that I just need to slap these all down in a in a row like this, and then run a pipe down the middle. Don't know how many I need, so I'm probably going to have got this wrong. But the basic idea is right, and, I, and then they all also require clean water in order to presumably dilute what I'm producing. So does that mean that? Does that mean that I'm digging up mud from the bottom of this lake and then I'm just endlessly diluting it until it becomes what I want at each separate stage of this process? Because if so, that seems a bit silly. Okay, so heavy mud water takes viscous mud water and water. Concentrated mud water takes heavy and water. Light takes concentrated and thin takes light and water. Saline takes thin and water. And uh, that's it. So one too many. And then the end here produce a load of saline water which I think I then just pour all over the floor and use a clarifier to get rid of. Is that useful for anything? I can grow plants with it. Fine. I can grow plants with it. Plants. Okay, I can split it off into chlorine and hydrogen stuff. Plants. Jellyfish. Oh, I can make salt out of it. Yeah, I can't yet, but eventually I can potentially make salt out of it. That's nice. Yeah, so mostly it's just sort of salty water that you can use to make either salt or apparently grow plants with, or, or void it in the water, so I need a clarifier. Uh, which I can't make because I need... Oh, I've got steel. I built too many washing plants, didn't I? That's a bit of a fail. Uh, those aren't going to have enough... Oh, no, not quite enough coverage. <laughs> Should have made those slightly close together. Oh well, put one there. Then use my big poles. I'm glad I've got these now. Makes things like that so much easier. So now I have all these various types of gunky water. <laughs> you can see it flash down the line as it uh, as each pulse out of this thing gets cleaned. Oh no, it's just because they all work at about the same speed. That's neat. Okay, so what did I want? I wanted clay bricks, didn't I? Which which step of the of the uh, process do I get clay from? The clay comes from concentrated mud water up and more water. Which one's producing concentrated mud water? This this is this is concentrated mud water. So if I take one of these, put it here, tell it to make clay. To make clay bricks, I think I've done burnt clay bricks, which takes sand, which is made from thin mud water in a washer, and lime, which is made from limestone, which is light mud water. Light mud water. So you're making limestone from this, and then 
another one. Thank you. Yep, good. And it was this one, wasn't it? Thin mud water, yes. That comes across there. Probably using that as well to make sand. Yes. Yeah, I don't need this wall here now. <laughs> this area is now in the middle of the base. Lime was the complicated one out of these. The other two are just being being just made. So that's lime in a blast furnace. Of course it is. And carbon dioxide. I can vent that, that's not a problem. This is going to need steel, isn't it? This is going to need something I haven't got yet. So several things I haven't got yet. Okay, so the lime cement processing, which takes met metallurgy for cement processing. Really? Come on. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be on hold for a couple of minutes while I, uh, while I do the research. While I'm waiting for that, let's tidy up these turrets because they're probably going to come in useful somewhere. As I said, I'm going to leave the belt in place because at some point I'm probably going to want ammunition along the bottom uh, the bottom row of my base. And this is as good a way as any is getting of getting it down there. I needed steel for the clarifier, and I'm bound to need steel for quite a lot of the other um, components that are going into this. Well, again, steel's growing, going up quite nicely, so that's not a, not too much of a problem. My next question is, where's the Where's the bottleneck in my research? Why am I not researching faster than this? Because I haven't got enough yellow science coming through because I've because I've completely screwed up the belt. Nice, how did that happen? Okay, you can have that and all of those. <laughs> right, that was a bit of a fail. Did anyone see when I did that? I mean, I don't think I've been scattering random rotation commands throughout my factory, but apparently I have. I could probably put in a few more of these as well. Let's get research happening a bit faster. Science? What are those things called? Lab. Great. Let's put some more of those in. I know I'm not constantly researching, so in theory I'm, I could I could be researching faster than I am at the moment, but it's more sort of, I don't really know what I want until I want it, and when I do want it, I want it quickly. So it's, it'd be useful to have it appear really quickly when I when I do want to do the research. And then it can spend the next however long building up the supplies of, um, of the science juices in, the, in all of the... Um, labs anyway while I'm waiting for the next uh, burst of inspiration to strike. I need to automate those as well. That's something else that steel will be useful for, or at least used up for. Hooray, happy happy science. Okay, I've had another 50% onto how fast, how quickly I can science. The metallurgy one is nearly finished. Ah uh, yes, I was going to um, automate my uh, power pole, wasn't I? Well this is now completely unnecessary, because I'm not using using Mark 1. Miners anymore, so let's put all of those down here, like that, and put those in there as well. Now, what did I need? Oh, yes, cement processing. That was the one. Okay, so that gets me glass and other types of cement. Lovely. Power poles. So power poles take iron stick, copper, and steel. Iron stick, copper, and steel. So if I have three of these, like that, then the one in the middle can make the iron sticks. Instead, I need this to be copper and steel. Now, if I use a, what's the best way to do this, probably like this. Just cut it all up and then say so that comes in there. That's copper. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, see that can go like that, and then under there. That can be split there and <laughs> go under. Mmm, spaghetti. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> That's wonderfully bad. Um, about that many. Is that everything I need now? Can I build that? Um, um, I can't remember what I needed. Lime is made in a blast furnace. Bricks are made in an assembly machine. And then fired in a, fur in a furnace. Simple-ish. As long as I can make a blast furnace, I can. I've forgotten the recipe already. Lime is made from limestone. It looks like that one. So that unloads into a blast furnace. Like, that's big. Okay. That goes into there. Is that gonna Is that gonna need fueling? It is. Oh that's not a problem. I've got a um a belt of suitable fuel here. You can be long handled and do that. That's easy enough. And I pull that out. Clay, sand and lime. Clay sand lime. Excellent. Assembly machine. Don't think I've run out of them. No, I haven't. There's one. Into a furnace, which also needs fuel. I'll need to make bricks. There we go. Come down here to there. 
across there. Right. Oh yeah, and I better have it unload as well. Now there's no real limit on this system, as long as I don't run out of water to... Yeah, oh, oh I was going to build a clarifier now, but steel wasn't I? I do wonder if I should tank some of these, especially right at the bottom here where it's just wasting it otherwise. Inline tank like that, and the overflow valve, remember to get it the right way around. Yeah. Something's not working. This isn't getting unloaded. Oh, I've... I need a flare stack to vent that. Hooray, hooray! Okay, that looks like it's working now. Great. I think that's a good time to call it an episode, really. I've, um... So, let's have a quick look at what, what we've done today. We need radar over in that corner. I'll do that before I finish. Those dragon's teeth are working really well over here. That's amazing. Okay, so, how are we doing? What have we been doing? So, we improved the lead production up here. That, to be quite honest with you, hasn't gone quite as well as I was hoping. Um... I was expecting to get a bit more lead through there, but I suppose that's limited by the consumption of coal. So, you know, we'll see, what, see how it goes. And if we look down here, yeah, there is there's plenty of lead available. So it's not gone quite as fast as I was hoping, but it's going pretty well. Tin production backed up. That's good. That's what we like to see. Plenty of that around. Steel production is still ticking over at the same rate. I haven't got around to upgrading these things yet because I need to upgrade these sorters, and that took me off on the on the uh, yak shaving mission of going off to build that water washing facility. Down here, steel is getting, and now steel is getting eaten up rather quickly by these um, pylon producers. Down here, we've not added anything to the main bus, but we have added some more on the research, and of course we've built this whole water uh, mud washing system over here, which is now uh, producing bricks at a, a rate, as basically as fast as, as fast as this assembly machine can do it anyway. I don't think that's going to be something I'm going to need an enormous number of, so the single assembly machine in there is probably going to be quite sufficient. But if I get fed up with waiting for it later, I can always always boost that quite easily. Assembly machines are easy easy enough to throw in. Good, so I think that's been quite a, uh, quite a reasonable episode. As I said, I'll just drop in that um, extra radar. Hey, I can build a radar too. Excellent. Give me some pylons, 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 pylons. Those ones. Okay, so from here, run this way. It's kind of funny. The reason I um, the reason I build my defences using the burner inserters is so that I don't have to run power out to the uh, the furthest corner, every corner of my base. And yet, I still do because I need to. I want to have um, pilot. I want to have radar out there. <laughs> so, you know, I, it's a good theory, but it doesn't quite work out in practice. I clearly, need a bit more oomph on these defences. So down here, I can easily put in that. Let's take that out. Another two turrets there. I think we'll have that other sniper turret I built over here. I don't know how much good they do, but the idea is nice, certainly. <laughs> Especially if they can do that. <laughs> how big an area does that cover? Oh, it covers down here as well. That's pretty impressive. I feel like I want to taunt those biters into coming over here. But no, we'll, we'll leave them alone for now. As I said, that's now... Oh, wow, that's got me a huge area of radar coverage. That's fantastic. I like these Mark II radars. I'll have to get another one up here, I think, and get out get some more coverage out this way but yes as I say that's um I feel like we're reasonably well defended down here now so I'm going to call it an episode thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one